Hello, this is the Solo Negocios Video Blog for the eight week of 2022 with the most important information, indicators, and legal material for businesses. On Monday, uh, INEGI reported the manufacturing sector indicator where it increased uh, yearly in 2.4%, but in the month of December, it decreased 0.1% uh, in a monthly basis. And that is on personal. On hours work, it increased 1% monthly, 3.5% yearly, and income in average 1.6 monthly and decreased 2.1% yearly. That's bad. Uh, by subsectors, the most uh, the one that increased most mostly in personal was uh, apparel and computation, communication, and electronic devices, as well as machinery and equipment, among other uh, subsectors. Also, the Ministry of Economic uh, talked about the foreign direct investment. Mexico brought $31.6 billion in 2021. By type of investment, it was done 38.6% on uh, reinvestment of profit or profit reinvestment. Uh, new investments, 43.7%. And uh, flows between companies, 17.7%. By sector, manufacturing 39.7%, mining 15.2%, financial services and insurance 15%, transports 8.8%, commerce 8.5%, um, hotels 5.2%, and the rest of subsectors 7.6%. By country of origin, the US 47.4%, uh, uh, Spain 13.7%, Canada 6.5%, and uh, United Kingdom 5.7% among others. The OECD exposed a set of indicators recognizing that Mexico is taking off on its uh, road path, economic road path, but recommended also a set of uh, reforms. So uh, in a summary, the, they say that the solid microeconomic policies help Mexico na navigate the recession and put its economy back on track. A reform agenda will be essential for lifting investment and turning around low productivity growth. Um, they say that the GDP is projected to grow 2.3% this year and 2.6% next year. And among the recommendations, they talk about sustained public finance and debt sustainability, meet spending needs by boosting tax revenues, potential tax to be cre increased by 3.5% of GDP, includes elimination of exemptions, and reforms of property tax. Priorities, restart private investment and turn around low productivity growth, require reforms on business regulations, boost competition, reduce informality and corruption, and meet greenhouse gas emission targets. Boost as well social spending, education and health, and public investment will support the ongoing recovery. Widening access to finance and strengthening digitalization will provide more equal opportunities and help to foster growth. Let's remember the OECD provided the get it in right document back in 2014 to the government back then to propose a set of uh, structural reforms that we had during those years. Well, this time they're offering this document is not that big as that one, but these reforms are different. These reforms are, are not necessarily to open markets. They imply that they should stay open, but they're talking about deeping specific spots on the social infrastructure of the country. The Energy Information Agency on Wednesday reported crude oil inventories without strategic uh, reserves, and they increased 4.5 million barrels in a week. Uh, and at 416 million barrels, it's about 9% below the five uh, year average for this time of the year, which implies improving, but not necessarily strong strong enough at least. The gasoline, the regular gasoline average price in, in the US was $3.53 per gallon and it increased four pennies. Uh, diesel, it was $4.05 per gallon and excuse me, it increased three cents. So it's not really improving that much the situation on oil and it was reported on Wednesday, but with data for Saturday last week. So this new report will include the data now with the Russia-Ukraine uh, conflict, we will see what happens with that. 
Also, Coneval reported the percentage of people in um, with income below the food uh, the food uh, cost price index, and this data was improving from 2018 to 2000. Um, well, was not was not improving. Was decreasing its improvement from 40.7% on 2018 to 36.6% on the first quarter of 2020. It improved strongly on the third quarter of 2020 when the recovery of the economy, the strong input of reactivation uh, on the month of July 2020, but then it decreased again. And then now it's at 40.3%. Well, it's better than pre-pandemic data, but it's not strong enough. It's still providing a lot of people of, of the whole population with income below the chances to feed themselves. The Bureau of Statistics of Labor Statistics uh, exposed the county employment and wages for the third quarter 2021 with 332 counties of the 343 largest counties in the US with employment in increases. So you can see here some of them, Honolulu in Hawaii, Clark at Nevada, and Calcasius at Los Angeles. At Los Angeles? No, that's Louisiana, excuse me. Uh, major work stoppages in 2021, it was 16, the data of stop workages in the whole year. It's interesting when the least number of major stop work, uh, stoppage, work stoppages occurred in 2009 with five, and the highest was 470 in 1952 when unionized movements were born, were, born, uh, were taking place for the first time in the United States, like generalized. Now, in the last 21 years, the average has been 17 work stoppages per year. So uh, 16 seems okay, you know, it's on, on, on average. Most of them occur on the education and health services and should be interesting given that the pandemics have brought those subsectors to hurt the most. In a, he exposed uh, the, the retail and wholesale indicators for December 2021 with the wholesale and uh, retail increasing st strongly in income in a yearly basis, but decreasing in December. In December, a year for high spending, you know. So it's improvement is taking place, but maybe not the strongest uh, as we should expect. At least the part that is um, a wholesale increased a lot over uh, even pre-pandemic data, but not the retail, so it preoccupies. Construction companies, uh, production decreased in December 1.8%, 6.5% uh, yearly basis growth. Uh, it's, not, it's not even, I mean, I don't know what, what it will be like, two thirds of pre-pandemic data or pre-pandemic position, very bad position for production on construction. Services indicator, it shows an increase in 2.4% monthly income and yearly income 1% growth. But personal, the yearly data is 15.7% down. The yearly income data for personnel, like wages and salaries, almost 20% down. Very, very difficult the situation on labor sector for services. That includes obviously entertainment centers and um, hotels and so on. So basically COVID has been keep hitting regionally this subsector. Well, the inflation for the first quarter, for the first 15 days of February 2022, increased 0.42%, yearly basis 722, which is strong, it's high. And specifically in merchandises with the uh, underlying inflation. The services sector, 0.26%. The non-underlying uh, inflation, 0.10% increase in um, uh, food. And energy, 0.82%, very strong increase in energy, specifically uh, oil, oil, gas. Well, Bureau, no, Department of Labor reported on employment insurance weekly claims with uh, a decrease of 17,000 to 232 initial claims. The four uh, week moving average was, uh, and the agglomerate data for current uh, claims, it's 1.5. 
five million uh, claims with a decrease of 49,000. That implies pre-pandemic data and a full recovery over the notion of pandemics with the most formal labor in the US. But recently, and the graph shows it clearly, the recovery has been very, very steady. Uh, also, the Bureau of Labor Statistics showed the persons with disability labor force in 2021 with 19.1% of persons with disability employed up to 17.9% in 2020. But the highlights, half of uh, all persons with disability were aged 65, 65 years old or over, uh, nearly three times higher than those with no disability. Across all age groups, persons with disability much less likely to be employed than those with no disability. Across the educational attainment groups, unemployment rates for persons with disability were higher than those without disability. 29% of workers with disability were employed part-time compared to 16% of those with no disability. And employed persons with disability were more likely to be self-employed rather than those without disability. So discrimination ahead. GDP products, uh, or gross domestic product for quarter and year 2021, second estimate for the Bureau of Economic Analysis. The growth for the fourth quarter, 7%. It was greater than the 6.9 previously revised. So uh, this is after a third quarter of 2.3%. So the year 2021 is in, in, initiated strong, improved, improving, in, 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 uh, excuse me, decreased the, the rate of growth in the third quarter and increased again the growth in the fourth quarter. And those three strong um, quarters, number one, two, and four in the 2021 year, were a lot better than those in 2018 and 2019. So uh, a lot of good things in the US in the economic recovery perspective. The global activity economic indicator, the monthly for December showed 0.18% growth in, in the month and 1.1% growth in the year. It is a lot better than the expected with the UI, the forecaster, but uh, still barely recovering, let's say. And the uh, merchandise trade balance in Mexico showed 6.2 million, uh, 6.2 billion dollars uh, deficit in January compared to 1.2 billion deficit in January 2021. So that increase in, in, in deficit comes along 18.5% uh, increase in, in uh, imports. And from those, 32% increased goods of consumption. So it means basically this deficit and in an improvement on our chances of consumption individually. So that's that's good news, you know? Maybe it's not that good that, but well, without with an analysis, very basic, given the bad data of the subsectors by December and the yearly recovery in Mexico, it breached that 32% increase in consumption. So shall we have better data for 2021 subsector uh, in the subsectors of the economy? Then we should have a lot better consumption rate growth and specifically for imports in the US, but well, in the US, in Mexico. But well, the truth is that this is what we have, you know, but it is good uh, at the end, the consumption growth. GDP for the fourth quarter, revised data and final data for the GDP of 2021, 5% growth in the year basis without growth in the quarterly basis against the third quarter. And this is worrisome because the recovery is slowing down highly. In the US, the Bureau of Economic Analysis showed that the personal income and outlays in January 2022 showed the increase for 9 billion for personal income. Disposable personal income increased in 19.8 billion and personal consumption expenditures 337 billion. From this data, it shows that the personal consumption expenditures price index increased 0.5% in the same month. Well, and then current prices P GDP shows 27.4 trillion uh, pesos with a growth of 9% between 21, 2021 and 2020. And the real GDP was 1.1% growth in this uh, specific quarter 
with 78% of the deflector. From this, the primary sector, the most important one is agriculture with eight, eight, $895 billion. Uh, manufacturing, billion pesos, excuse me. Manufacturing, indu manufacturing industry, 4.9 billion. The previous was for $895 million. Uh, thousand eight hundred ninety five thousand million dollars and manufacturing is 4.9 billion uh, pesos excuse me pesos again and from this uh, and, and the tertiary sector uh, retail 2.9 billion and um, wholesale 2.7 billion pesos so from the whole GDP 61.5 percent is tertiary activities and only from secondary activities, 18.9% manufacturing. So that's a strong part. Well, on the legislative radar from ANADE, one interesting law being proposed by uh, the Chamber of Deputies, the representative chamber, is to increase the time when the constitutional labor uh, changes that were made in 2017 and increased and well, legally exposed and, and modified back in 2018, 2019, well, they're requiring a change on the initiation of the judicial power on the states to get the labor system. Nowadays, it's under the executive uh, power, so it's been shifted to the uh, judicial power, but they need more time for increasing their budget capacity to apply this in several states, specifically in Chihuahua. Um, on new events for the next week, we have IMEF with touristic industry, uh, talking about the evolution of the touristic market in 2021. Also, IMEF will be showing the business strategy with ecological values. Also, uh, the IMEF Financial um, Stock Exchange Intermediation Committee we talk about, we'll, we'll talk about the economic perspectives and markets for 2022. Another will talk about uh, responsibility of intermediaries of internet and the Supreme Court, given this uh, law being uh, disputed that requires carriers, cell phone carriers to get our data. It will be an interesting, sec uh, I mean, uh, this, this speech will include that one, that topic on that resolution that is pending by the Supreme Court. Also, the another podcast, we have the 47th episode with Perspectives 2022, the legal context. Also, the agenda for next week, we have Japan and uh, exposing the industrial production, Europe, Turkey, Spain, specifically inflation, and the US, the trade balance with goods. On Tuesday, China will talk about the Purchase Manufacturing Index as well as Europe. Also, the US will show the ISM for manufacturing sector. On Wednesday, the inflation for Europe and the Beige Book in the US. On Thursday, the PMA Kaixin from China and the Market PMI from Services and Manufacturing at Europe. Also, the US will show the ISM for Services and uh, Europe will talk about exports and imports and the trade balance, as well as the US, the labor rate of participation. Inehi will show the uh, monthly business opinion indicator along the PMI of Mexico by Inehi. Also, IMEF will talk about the indicator IMEF. Inehi will show the cyclical indicator systems, uh, re report on vehicles, small vehicles, as well as uh, hybrid and electronic electric vehicles. Also the quarterly institutional sectors report, the investment report and the consumption report for December, 2021 on both schemes. And well, indicator, indicator IMEF, the PMI that we make at IMEF on March the 1st, as well, uh, Banxico will show the statement uh, of the last week. Um, the money sent from Mexicans abroad to Mexico in January, 
and the results of the treasury bills uh, issued by the Mexican government. Also the quarterly uh, report for the fourth quarter, as well as the other government, the, this is the like the FDIC in the US, the IPAF, but uh, with a report of the, um, of the movement of uh, values. And finally, it will show the private sector forecast for February, 2022. What we talk about uh, solo negocios in solo negocio radio last week. Well, on Monday, Guillermo Soria from Conafi talked about the uh, tax uh, payments for January, which had a lot of problems, and the rate of risk to be calculated and entered at most on February 28. On Tuesday, Luis Enrique Gutierrez and myself talked about. Uh, the economic uh, context after a potential war. This was on Tuesday, the war initiated on Wednesday. Uh, we also talked about the OECD uh, survey that, and, and reform agenda that they recommended. I talked about uh, the, on Wednesday, the another radars and legislative perspectives and forecasts. Uh, on, Tuesday, on Thursday, UTEC talked about STEAM education and education on robotics. And on Friday, I talk about final GDP in Mexico 20, uh, for 2021 and the second revision for the US, as well as underlying indicators. Well, if you need assistance on any of these topics uh, talked about this time, please feel free to contact us on any of our open broadcast media or the library and podcast we have available. Here you can see our contact information. Have a great week. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye.